The mission was to find a big outer reef. Kevin George was the guy who sent us in the right direction. He's been there for 10 years plus, who knows, he's always been talking about it and we finally listened to him and, and decided to make a call and go visit him. He's actually the, the main guy who told us to go there with the last North Shore we have. And yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a legend too. The real pirates. He was always a tradition to get there. Tell me about Manu. He's a fucking charger. He will. He's always ready. That's all I have to say. He's always ready. Doesn't matter the condition, small, big, medium size, big. He, he takes everything. Yeah, he's ready. A real waterman. Uh, I've scoped it out, Google Earth, like the whole area, and definitely you can see potential. Since it's farther east, near Puerto Rico, near the deep water channel, like technically it should, it should hold more size than, than around here. So the whole mission was to find the biggest wave we've seen in the Dominican Republic and we looked at a potential swell coming, it was a big one and we got a huge crew together to go there. Uh, cameras, big wave surfers, upcoming surfers, all time surfers and we just rallied. We packed cars, we packed jet skis, we packed uh, big wave guns. It was like, it was like the very first ever big wave surf trip in the Dominican Republic. That it was an amazing energy with everybody there. For real. You know what? Psych, bro. It was amazing. Are you ready? Yeah, see, and Piesa. El viaje de viajes. Hey. And it's a twist. Oh, what do we got there? The little Zen. Check it out. No, y van, van demasiada gente que tienen conocimiento de Ola Grande y que estudian esa vaina y viven de eso, entiende? Como que está el crew perfecto para explorar. No, está heavy. A mí, o sea, por lo menos, lo de la ola cerca de la orilla. Me tiré por favor. Pero hay dos mil riffs, uno de esos va a funcionar. Exacto. No, no, no. Is that that's a that's half moon, right? That one. But with this well, it would break back here. That's what it would break. No way. up in here guys sandwiches okay okay i thought maybe we we're gonna get the mango i get some like cultural yeah, experiences yes okay, yes. ah, okay okay so good So we get there in the afternoon, we don't know anything about the place, we meet with this guy who's been living there and tells us about where the brakes are, driving in from the mountain we kind of see the reefs and we see how spread out they are 
this is late afternoon, it's windy, we go look around a little bit and the forecast was showing some weird winds. Like if we would see that wind here in Cabarete, we knew it would be blown out, but since it was a new spot and it's near like a big bay, we don't know what it's doing there. So that first night, it just went calm. There was no clouds in the sky. It was full moon. It, like everything was linking to be like a perfect glassy day the next day. And which it was through the whole night. We all wake up five in the morning. I'm not ready to give up this spot. It's not it's kidding. It's been too many years here by myself. I'm too old. I'm gonna die and, and nobody's gonna know. And it drops off to seven, eight thousand, nine thousand meters right off here. Into the you know. And in, depending on the angle, you know, you got that swell coming in. Nothing in the way, no banks or anything, like the silver banks like they have up there. So I was thinking, God, that area's got to be happening. I discovered it in 94. Me and Gary Eversole, a, a famous windsurfer that you kind of remind me of him. And his name's Gary, just like you. He's uh, one of my best buddies, my son's godfather. We're both in the windsurfing heavily. How old are you? How old are you? I'm going to be 73 oh, really? Sunday. You are an old man. Sunday. Gonna I thought I was the old guy. You got me beat by I'm going to be 67 in January 30th. You're going strong. Good for you, buddy. We're going to surf till the last day. There's no stop. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna keep looking for it now that outer reef that maybe has a shape. Like maybe we find like a 10 foot perfect. I'll just ride that big one. Fits an outer reef, man. Let's, so then let's back a couple more boards and do your board. We can do that. Yeah. Man, I'm so excited, man. Just to see what is new. Just the, the might have been a new place. But avoid going near the river mouth. Go out a little bit and then come in by the pier down there. You'll see it. The pier's right down the coast. early and then the, the rest of the crew go to the town and get on the little pier to get into the boat. Very glassy, some big white waters out the back, you know. I think we're gonna score something for sure. Yes, <laughs> new frontiers. Yeah, man. We got a nice crew. We're gonna tackle it. Just <laughs> tackle it, bro. <laughs> Listen, listen to me. It's too rough to at way. There's waves in the way. We don't even have to go. We can surf there. They're gonna bring the boat over to the river mouth. But the jet skis go. We don't want the jet skis. The jet skis are already out there in the reef. They're already out there. Let's go yeah, to the river mouth. Okay, but uh, oh. oh you're, gonna, you're gonna follow me now. Let's Wait go. Till I turn around. Let's go. Let's go. Cause we're waiting for. That. Yeah, I got a 9-2. I'd like to have a 10 for it. I should have brought a 10 for it. Beautiful. It's, it's going to be 
It'd be big, I hope, right? Oh, That's what we came here for. Let's see. Yeah, Nick, how you feeling? I feel great. Yes. It's historical. Biggest swell in Dominican Republic. Let's go. Psyched to be here. Yeah, I'm so stoked you're here. Yeah. Stoked to connect with you, too. You too. I'm such been... a fan of your work. Bro. Thanks, buddy. It's been a minute. I know. How you Last been? time I was hanging out with you, you were like this big in a fluorescent <laughs> wetsuit. <laughs> Popping airs over table rock. It always comes back. Always comes back, dude. Full circle. Full circle. circle. Will you believe it, Nicolas here? <laughs> Increíble. Saludos. Vivo en la colonia, vivo en la colonia, en playa toda su mía allá. Todos los marinos me conocen allá. Bro, mira, 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 mira. I'm tripping. Eso no puede ser una ola. Hey, para papito. No sonó ni el clic. Y ya estaba asustado. Wow. So we gotta be ready soon, let's go! <laughs> Surging hard. It reminds me of the first time we did the Puerto Roca for, for Red Bull and we went there and we didn't know what the fuck was going to go, go on and nobody was serious and you know I ended up out in the middle of the Amazon River that you couldn't get the boat back around. One, one, our security boat that we left, they tied it to a rope in one of the little coves and it got ripped off the ropes. It's just like, you got to be prepared, especially when you're going on a place you've never been before. And, and nobody knows what's going on, so you got to really put your serious hat on, you know? Try and take the precautions and at least think about what could happen. So, the second trip's going to be easy, the third trip's going to be a piece of cake, but the first time, you don't know what's going on. Look, here's a surge, grab the rope! There goes the ride. Like stuff like that, man. It just like comes up and it's mother nature and it's way more powerful than any of us. And we get a group together, that's when Everybody's got to think in one unison or else yeah. shit happens, you know. I don't want it to happen on my birthday since Sunday. I want to make it to 73. You're going to make it to 100. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Trying, but you got to be prepared. Yeah. Whoa. 
And what saved the town was that reef out there. It's it's written in the books, it's for true. 2,000 some people died over there in Nagua, in Matasitas, because it's, it's below sea level, and the wave came through and whacked everybody, 1946. Let it be your will and not ours, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 <laughs> Que te des así, que bro. First few waves we saw it was like a big cap capping waves 25 30 feet waves just capping and not really doing anything and it's like a bit in the middle of nowhere where you you, you wouldn't know where to sit honestly but yeah I just I just kept looking into like picturing in my mind and I would take my phone out and jet ski and look at the map where we're at I was like oh I know there's more reefs more reefs more reefs so I keep going deeper and then we find this big it's it's a big laugh that it's it feels like a break it feels like it's breaking the same place and with the tide changing it was shifting a little bit but it was still like an epic an epic spot it was definitely one of the best uh lineups that we saw around there for big waves because the, the while we were looking for those waves the boat went in a different direction which we didn't know that we we're gonna go in that direction and they found a huge wave and that was also very in the middle of nowhere but it was like it was the tide was doing something there and it wasn't really like a perfect big wave spot I 
aguante, no aguante. Do they know the channels? Yeah, they, 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 yeah. That's why we're in the channel. We're in the deep water right now. We're in the car. Well, let's stay in the deep water and let the jet skis. I was looking, you know, I was, I feel fear, panic. Everybody in the boat was like, uh, what the fuck is gonna, what, what the fuck is gonna happen now? We, if we get a row wave into the boat, we're gonna fucking flip. So at that point, I was looking for my swimming fins. <laughs> the boat guys were crazy. They knew how to boat, but they didn't, they did not know much about big waves for sure. Definitely some sketchy situations out in that boat. It was pretty crazy. The boat was insane, right? I'd say. I don't know. I never thought we were gonna do that. Who takes a catamaran out when it's like 20, 30 foot? I don't know. <laughs> so it was pretty, pretty scary because I've been in a bunch of boat accidents. I've been in a boat accident on the Amazon at the Puerto Roca and, were, and you know, almost died. I've, I've sailed across uh, the Atlantic Ocean from Canary Islands to Brazil with no motor and a little boat. I've been through a lot of stuff. It's not like, okay, this is gonna, I'm gonna be taken by surprise. So I'm watching this and, I, and there's, it's not safe. There was no plan. Our jet skis left. Nobody knew what they were doing. Didn't know where we were going. And the boat was a whale watching boat for taking tourists out, you know? It wasn't like some, you know, pimped out boat that we, we knew we were gonna go explore for ways. So just, I, I started to feel pretty stressed because I didn't see, it wasn't a thing where we could just go out and we we're just gonna catch some waves. It was like there was a whole bunch of people that didn't know what, what to do. So I wanted to be prepared, so I just put on all my safety stuff. I, I cracked my head open last year and almost died, so I kind of want to be alive when my grandson needs me, you know? So I figure if you take all the precautions that you had, I put on my vest, I put on my reef sandals, I put on my helmet, and I had a board out that I was going to grab if we went over, because I didn't know who it the ability of the captains or anything either you know so if we would have kept headed in the direction we were we would have encountered one at least one wave and that boat wasn't ready for a wave no, it, was, it wasn't ready for it. I mean those guys in retrospect they, they were pretty good they knew what they were doing but and you got to assume they do or you got to hope they do which where, where we were at was you gotta hope you do. We, we couldn't assume anything. And one ca one of the caps started drinking a beer and it's like, geez, you know. Because we got lost on the boat, some sketchy situation there, which I'm pretty much concerned about when I go boats here because none of the the drivers here, even though they know the reef, but they when they go out, they go for another thing. But when we go surfing, we're pretty much closer to the, besides that they're big wave, we're pretty much closer to the to the reef because we want to see the waves. So, in, you know, if something came up there that they, they you know, I, I freaked out in a way because we were out there, not freaked out in a way that we're going to die because we all know how to handle it kind of. But hey, we were so, so far out that for sure we're going to have the worst time in our life, you know, out there. And, and, uh, Besides that, we're gonna lose a lot of things, and the trip we're gonna go off. So, because just going out there and, and phew, that's like uh, sketchy, you know. It was pretty much like it, we left it to the others, but we were like warriors just going to war. I mean, I felt like we were going to war when I don't know any shit about it. 
I'm going there. I know there was something's gonna come. It, it came up. We didn't know exactly where to go because it was our first time. The the boat crew was amazing too. They say where the weight were, but since they were no surface, we didn't believe them. After we decided to get together and actually find them because we went in different directions, then we met in the middle and we told them to follow us to this wave that I've seen that was big left that has huge potential. Went on the jet skis faster together and as soon as we get there, Andresito sees the wave and he goes like, ah, oh, this, this, this is spot. We can definitely surf here. And and we're turning around to go to the back to the boat. And he's like, wait, wait, there's a set coming. I stop, we both look back, and these two waves set, maybe like 35, 40 feet faces, arches. You can feel, feel a bus inside this barrel. And for sure, the biggest left barrel I've seen in the island, 100%. It was like, I, 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 I mean, it looked like really big pipe, but not in, not in the sense of how pipe is. It's just like the way the barrel was. I've only seen barrels have pipe like that. And here in the island, Puerto Plata is a right. And I've seen barrels like that on a, on a right in Puerto Plata, but not, not a left like that. And I don't know, the tide was changing. We went back to the boat, get, got the boards ready. By the time we get back, there was still some waves, but in the entire session that we were out there for like two and a half hours, there was not a single wave that broke like the ones we saw. And Andresito was really close to catch one that was like, it was, it felt like we were always trying to go deeper and deeper and deeper. And I don't know if there was current, I don't know what it was, but we, we never saw the wave that, that we saw from the jet ski. We never saw it when we were out in the session. It was fucking heavy. You see the photos I sent it to you. Heavy. Fucking big tube. I don't know. Maybe 25, 30 something. But like fucking. Don't know what to say in English, dude. Gnarly. <laughs> and Abdulia and Wolf were in, in the jet skis trading. Sometimes they would jump in the water. Sometimes they would shoot from the, from the ski, try to get different angles. Wolf was in the water in the channel. But we were concerned about him, so we have to be checking on him all the time because of the sets. Yeah. All the time in the water, my friend. Waves were too big. Like from 50 to 30 something, depending what which peak, I was scared. For real. Just jumping in there and then you're in or you're out. If you're in there, you know what you're doing and then you gotta be you gotta be full prepared, especially with the guys paddling out, you know, those guys coming from the biggest waves in the world. So for them, it's like a normal thing. And I remember my Andres said, the waves is breaking on the blue. And when I really realized, yes, the waves, if you see in the ocean, there is different colors. And when I saw it's breaking on the blue, then I realized why it's breaking on the blue.
to the to the peak. I feel a lot of anxiety, you know, fear. But then when I notice uh, my friend Brian knew how to deal with the jet ski, I feel more comfortable. But then, after being there and enjoying the guys getting those waves, we got out of focus, man, and one, one fucking set got us. So, dude, we launched for, I think, maybe 15 feet high or more. Yeah, was, I was fucking feeling good. Fear. But we landed, nobody is hurt. We go back to the ski and we continue charging. Actually, many people don't know what happened out there, but I saw uh, Brian and I think it was Abdullah in the, in the, there was a set that got me, but I pretty much was dog, trying to dog dive that 710 thing when I had, when I looked to the shoulder, but it was not the shoulder, it was an old, because the, the place there is like three peaks, you know? But on the peak that is the mellow one to the shoulder, I just saw, I just, no, I heard, I heard, Whoa! and then I look, when I look, I saw the, the jet ski, man, like, I don't know how many feet in the sky, straight up. Brian stay like flying. He looks like those guys that do the, they know, I mean, he knew what they're doing, but, and I saw Dulio like flying. I think it was Abdulio or I don't know what, but I, it was flying behind. And Brian stayed on the jet ski, which I think was good in a way, because I was like, oh my God, I hope that thing don't come back or landing on him. And it was good, he kept it because then he pushed himself kind of away and the jet ski landed kind of in front of it, kind of safety. I mean, I was like, and anything that happened out there, man, you, you gotta be prepared. It's not like, it's not kid stuff, man. Hard to say, but when you surf in bigger wave, and that's something I'm learning, you need to be so much aware because if you focus so much in you, which you have to do to make it happen, but there are other people around that, you might cause a big accident there, you know? And I didn't see Papita, I didn't see Manuel, I just saw in front of me, I saw Nick was coming and I saw like, I'm on the roof of the second floor and he's down there making a dog dive. And I just hear a little bit like, Ooh, but I, I pretty much, I didn't even distract. I just saw something there. Man, I, I, that was crazy because I thought I had and I was like looking at the wall, like if I would see surfing the left. And when I did this, damn, I was too far forward. I wanted to be far forward to get going because the bar was really thin, but then I was too much far forward. You know, and then when I, when I realized that I was taking air, man, that thing, man, I want to go back there so bad. That wave, I saw two. If I make that wave, oh my God. I went on a wave with Bobo in front of me and Papitos. This is a kill picture of the three of us dropping in. And my boy's like up in the air. A second later, I nosed over and I went flying. Bobo went flying as well, so we both wiped out and Papito made it. He was like the, the farthest out on the shoulder. I feel so grateful that we went to that wave. Actually, I have one of the biggest wipeouts I ever get, but I, I went for one that, whoa, I mean... And I tried another, but the, the, the thing has so much push. Like, it just, whoa, it looks like the bay, you know? Kind of like, whoa, lift you up and push you up, but you're like, nothing out there you know actually i saw andres in a 10 footer board trying for waves that i thought he had it and then this thing just keep pushing more i mean andres been serving everywhere around and this tells you so much about how that thing can be fucking mental madness hardcore and a lot of people like most of the people on the boat got sick uh they weren't feeling too good so they actually didn't end up probably now it's definitely something that kind of it's it's in our heads like oh we need to go back to see if that like happens more often but um overall we found big waves and we know that it can hold a lot more size multiple reefs can hold more size and also different fault directions so i guess we're gonna have to come back sometime and and 
find the right conditions to go there. So I really can't wait to see all those guys back together in the same, the same trip. You know, we now with more knowledge. Yeah. You know, now that we know what it is exactly, you know, I think things gonna get better, and I think we gonna get better footage. Yeah. Next time. Oh. This is the spot. It's so many. We saw another spot. I mean, there were like, we just served one reef. I tell you, the story continues. This is only like the. I will not say even the beginning, this is just like the preview. Because we just, we cross ar around so many reefs on one side, and then the one we went there was like, it was insane that way it was like pushing so much. It was not like a perfect reef lining, you know, but it was a perfect, um, it was breaking in the same spot, you know, like you pretty much know where it's gonna break, but the thing has so much push. It's uh, it's another world there. It's another I call it another frequency. No oh, Bobo. Oh, this guy, forever young, you know. This guy is charging. He put a rashi on. We were all with vests and inflation vests and impact vests, and he just grabbed his rash car. We all had I don't know eight sixes and up, and he just grabbed like a six six paddled out and got waves you know and paddling to waves he got waves and and he was like bringing such a cool energy and he's like super stoked on any any type of surf and any little wave that he catches he's just like super psyching on it and and sick if he's like super stoked for everybody who gets a wave and he's like whoa look at that wave oh look at this guy oh look at this drop oh look at that wipeout he's like stoked about everything and he brings a good energy around, it was pretty sick. The last day, the rest of the crew stayed and looked at the other breaks near land and we decided to just hit the road and come back. I tell you, after the group split, that some left and then we stayed there, we went to a place I wanted to see. It was kind of my dream just to see it. And when I stood up up there, because it's like a hill, like maybe one kilometer, to, I don't know how far, but you can see all those coconut trees and dog. Man, we we saw the beginning of the wave that we didn't ride. And to the right side it was. I mean the best corduroy setup I ever seen in the Dominican Republic. There is no corduroy like this around here. And big. I mean coconut trees and you see the wave out the back like that. It's so, I, I mean, and it was windy, I don't know what you want to say. And you could look to that corner, to that corner, you see wave, so good. I mean, we are blessed, I call it the gem of the world. <laughs> yeah, man. We knew there was a secondary swell coming right behind it, and it looked like a better forecast for this area of the island. Uh, we hit Nawa, coming back from there, got some barrels, beach break, nothing crazy, just head high. And then the next few days, the swell cleaned up, aligned, and then we hit Puerto Plata. Y también aguacate, el chino pica pollo y el chivato cobra por vendete. Diablo rayito de pa 
pasaste te presté 500 pesos miserable y nunca me lo pagaste. Aquí hay que darte duro con un bate y tirarte de un edificio cuando caiga el piso. Mira y tapate, no cuando te aquí. Mira si es duro el trote. It's a day Tommy's been waiting for. Ya me veré no da clase karate y cómo va a dar clase si aquí no te da tiempo de cuadrarte. Yo soy loco con mi bar. Aquí se bebe pila y el chapeo es fea diario.
vas a contar la verdad Lo que me haga daño Todo fue tan real Y me lleva un engaño Pones en marcha mis defectos Pero no soy ningún hipócrita No digas que echaste de menos Todo lo que olvidaste luego Pones en marcha mis defectos Pero no soy ningún hipócrita No digas que echaste de menos Todo lo que olvidaste luego Te declaraste culpable Tú me causaste ese daño tan irreparable Que me juró te amor Si es algo que detesto Quédate en el intento Cuando tratas de olvidarte Así tan vulnerable Te declaraste culpable Tú me causaste ese daño tan irreparable ¿Quién me juró este amor eterno y era inolvidable? ¿Cómo te atreves a odiarme así? Yo no sé Penitencia 
De lo que debe vivir ahora puede dejar la sol. No necesita que la comprenda porque tiene otro lugar. Donde la cuiden y la protejan de este infierno. Aprende, so seguimos adelante, well. My Joseph on the bench, and so we tell them, say. My Joseph on the bench, and hey. Desde niño aprendí que hay que ser agradecido con quien te ha ayudado. Siempre vuelvo a la país cuando pierdo el rumbo y vuelvo al camino. So gracias, ya, ya. Por la familia ya que no me abandonan nunca Gracias ya ya Por los amigos reales que siempre apoyan Yo quiero brindar Por grandma siempre la llevo en la memoria Yo vuelvo a brindar Por mi ADN, mi arte es la herencia de grandpa Agradecido yo voy de ser, yo voy de ser, yo voy de ser, well De lo bueno y lo malo se aprende Hay que seguir adelante La decido Yo voy de ser, yo voy de ser, yo voy de ser, well De lo bueno y lo malo se aprende Hay que seguir adelante Doy gracias por quien se fue las puertas y a mi espalda fue a difamar Sigo en la vía derribando las murallas Ya no hay miedo ni inseguridad 
eso ahora no me van a parar Si ya ya me respalde y de este niño esto es mi vida Del corazón viene la lírica, te envuelvo en mi mística Me siento pura vida, agradecido Yo he de ser, yo he de ser, yo he de ser well. De lo bueno y lo malo se aprende Hay que seguir adelante Agradecido Yo he de ser, yo he de ser, yo he de ser well. De lo bueno y lo malo se aprende Hay que seguir adelante Busque el significado de amistad Y pude entender que si no hay lealtad es falsa la sinceridad, incondicionalidad Son factores que no pueden faltar Amor y amistad, de la mano va No son iguales, pero se complementan en... That's right. Little primer course. Yeah, I think tomorrow's is better. Yeah. Now you know the lay of the land out there. Yeah, it's a good wave. Really good wave. Hell yeah. Porque en medio pos de adentro Gracias por tantos de ellos Nice Look good under your feet Get some moments Obvi, nice Gary, you got a nice wave I did Oh, you did get a wave I got two waves I got one wave You didn't catch a wave with video up on top Finally at the end I got one Barely got to my feet on my second one My first one Right. All right. <laughs> I don't have much. I had to get away early. You know, right. I still got some energy yeah, left. Yeah, because after an hour, paddling, breathing, I get it. Paddling, it's my legs that are, my arms are strong. You ever push a leg press in the gym? Uh -uh. It was epic. Hey. I got some <laughs> great epic, ones. Epic. I'm stoked. I didn't think I was going to get any. But I got a couple. <laughs> How was the experience? Amazing. Uh, I went for like the little ones. So one of my waves is like a half. So two halves equal one of theirs. But still. That adds up I'm to psyched. a few good ones. I'm psyched. The channel's amazing, actually. The worst part is right here, this little current on the inside. But then once you're out and in the channel, it's honestly like super easy. I don't know. Not easy, but. If you're caught on the inside, it's kind of annoying. It's super like powerful in there. But then once you just go to the side, the channel's like amazing. <laughs> Gary's a legend. I think I'm so lucky to be surfing with them. <laughs> That's the only reason that I would like go because they're so inspiring. <laughs> I'm lucky. Right. <laughs> So how was it, Obdi? Did you get some angles? It was amazing. Beautiful. <laughs> what was different about today? The colors of the water. <laughs> and the riders. <laughs> the boy is charging. <laughs> but I never even mm. seen it. No, dude, it's all good. Did you see it? <laughs> Did you see it? Yeah, yeah, I saw you. <laughs> yeah, I, saw you. <laughs> I was looking at the picture now, and then I see you're coming tubing there. there that thing go. was open, too. It stayed open. It was like, oh! For a moment. There's a breath. For a moment, yeah. It was like the the, the oh, well, bridges. You fell, you fell there? No, the tracks kind of produce a foam ball. I couldn't no get shit. over. Anyway, anyway, no shit. No, I was anyway. saying it like this, and then I'm like, yeah. Look at you. <laughs> that's epic. Hey, 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 dude, that's what happened. <laughs> Behind you never pig. saw him. I haven't even seen him. <laughs> Behind the pig. That's how you do it. I was, I was enjoying my. I was enjoying this. And then I'm like, look, I see a board there, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's already in. Yeah, still. Got, barrel. got one fun one. <sighs> Beautiful day. Water's warm. Oh, Man. What more can you ask for? The, that big mountain up there, fucking powerful. It's sick. So sick. You could tell the setup oh, this has is so much potential. One. I'd love to see it three times the size. <laughs> yeah, but I don't see, I didn't even see. Did you know this is the exact point where Columbus Discover the new world? No, I know that. That's sick. I went and checked out the castle though. Yeah. The castle's nuts. You went inside? The no, fort? I didn't go. Well, yeah, for a second. No, but that's it. And then the guards were like. This is 100 pesos? It's 100 pesos, yeah, I don't have my wallet on me though. <clears throat> so, how was it? 
Bro, you had some beautiful rides. Like we can cut it. Oh, it, oh we, I got some serious. <laughs> got it like that. No, but look, that session, that it. session will take you, huh? Yeah. That's it. What's it like surfing your your home big wave break after surfing the the really nuts ones? I mean, I'm at home, you know. I just feel like my backyard, you know. Just a niece, you know. Just a very a lot of joy when I see it happening here. Some good waves. You can cut it. Yeah. No yeah. stress. Zero stress here. Just one grain of I rice stress. and he's ready to go surf uh -huh. all day. Airplane mode. <laughs> a lot of one grain of rice. They don't cooked. feel that, but I feel <laughs> enough, a lot, enough man. energy for all day surfing. You yeah. got it there. Huh? <laughs> oh, oh, you got oh. it there. Let me give you a little. Uh, yeah, do I see two different waves? Two different waves. Two different look waves. At, look at that shit. Two different waves. It's all how you look at it. <laughs> Luckily, Andres Flores was the, you know, the pretty much the pioneer big wave into the scale of uh, international and stuff like that. He's been pushing the limits here and pushing us, let's say, into the next level, discovering new frequency of the surfing. And the rest this, this year is like, well, last year. <laughs> last year he stole the show. He um, he went to Nasabe and paddled to one of the biggest waves that anybody has paddled and just put in DR on the map, uh, as well surfing here and discovering waves here. He's also a guy who just puts his head down and, and goes. Boys are charging, girls are charging, girls are charging. <laughs> Gary Linden? Gary Linden, a legend. Charging. He's always charging. Yeah, yeah, always charging. Always charging. Okay. <laughs> 73, there. still oh. doing it. Keeping it real. Oh. <laughs> real stories, shit. real surf stories. Mira, mira, mira ese. Se ve borrosa porque está como tirado de la cámara. Wow, behind the peak. That was, that that was, was that, that big dog? That was, that was, that big. That was dropping I mean, into it. Eh? It's my 73rd birthday on on Sunday, and I'm just like, wonder if I'm gonna be able to catch some big waves and you know, warm water, yeah. perfect lineup. It was it was great, the best birthday ever, right? <laughs> wonder no more. I know. How was the setup? Did you like the the spot? Oh, it's incredible. I mean, it's just it's such so a perfect wave. The reef's perfect. Yeah. It, it lines up, to, you know, the waves here in the Caribbean are different than they are in the Pacific. They break, they, you know, waves are wave, but these break different, they kind of just, they don't line up, you don't see the lines, they just kind of, all of a sudden they pop up, and then some of them sit down, and you got to get ones that just, just right, and then they, you can't catch it, you can't catch it, you can't catch it, and then it just hits the reef and it just jacks, and they're not, not as powerful and, I, and and when we went and surfed those outer reefs it was the same thing i was glad i got a one on the head on the outer reef because i felt the power of the wave it wasn't wasn't that you know oh my god i got took off a of one and it closed out and i jumped off and it took me pretty darn deep you know, it's pretty powerful once you get in in the in the zone. You know, when you're outside, where it's breaking, it's it kind of hits and then backs off. To be honest, it steep drops. Once you get used to it, then it gives you a chance to push it a little deeper. You can take off off a little deeper. You can take off a little later because you know it's not gonna. It's not like Mavericks or something like that. Was gonna. And I caught a closeout. And I made the drop. It was a pretty, pretty late drop, and then um, I was pretty stoked. And I just kind of jumped off, but then the wave just, just dragged me and it pulled me pretty deep. It was, it was dark, you know, and my ear kind of, you know, popped and everything. And then I got cleaned up and pulled all the way in the inside. But, but like I said, it's just warm water. You, you know. It's, it doesn't feel dangerous. It doesn't feel so dangerous. It doesn't feel like cold water is different. 45 minutes now, I can't last more than 45 minutes. So I gotta catch a wave really quick, a yeah. couple waves quick, because after 45 minutes, my body doesn't work anymore. Here, you can extend it a little bit. It's so perfect. I'm, you know, I love it here, I'm coming back. I, <laughs> but you didn't give up. Oh no, never give up. Give up, you lose. If you if you keep trying, you're playing, and you're playing, you're winning, man, because we're all going nowhere the, the same same place, you know? There's no goal that some people get to and other people don't. It's about playing the game. 
sticking in the in the game and you've got to play second base or you get to pitch or whatever you know you still keep playing gary's amazing i've, I've known him for so many years he used to be the contest director for the QSs in Puerto Escondido and he's done the Punta de Lobos event and a bunch of other big way big way events and uh, he's always been connected uh, to this island through Andres because Andres lived with him in California works with him uh, Andres is the rights for him so um, having him around was was really cool, yeah, 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 he's a legend. That's it. But we paddled out, we got some waves. It was, it was, it was like small Puerto Plata, I would say, for how we've surfed it. And then the next day, the buoys were showing smaller, but higher period and just different I don't know I wasn't convinced since I've seen it the day before so I decided to stay in, Port, uh, in Encuentro and it was actually the best Encuentro I've ever seen like bubbles I've never seen bubbles point just barreling and not closing out like every single wave was a speeding barrel that would open up <laughs> non-stop waves and the best December in the last 10 years I would say it just it was incredible just waves and we, since November 1st till the end of December there was four days you could longboard out of there right the rest it was all short boardable with power the like non-stop north swells the left was going off canal was going off bubbles point just two months of non-stop waves. Sí, sí, sí. 
They did a Legends game. You guys ready for the next mission? Oh, yeah. You guys, you can fire me, right?